It was a very um, environment of extreme emotion. I, I couldn't um, bear it at, at, at all. The information we're getting is more and more Al-Shabaab cells in groups of 15, 30 are getting reported by pastoral communities as having come to the border. But it's not only his life which is in danger, it is the life of Kenyans. And because he's just a governor, that does not mean that his life is so special. His life is so special. The government's response to the attack hit a raw nerve, prompting the an Kenyan. angry political offensive from the county leadership. So we're getting fed up completely fed up. Why then should the government keep a county commissioner under whose watch more than 100 persons have died? Why has the national government downplayed the threats on the governor's life? Why has the interior secretary blamed bandits and not the Al-Shabaab for the attacks? We've come here to peel back the layers of politics in Mandera County to understand the violence here and the ease with which the Al-Shabaab seems to operate here. to address the security situation of this population. He should not need to work alone. And if he has choose to work alone, we are telling him we will not work with you, he should go. He also has allegations of cor being corrupt within the county. The man these protesters want out is Alex Olenkoyo, the county commissioner. Protests are raging outside his office, so he's chosen to stay away today somewhere safe. Under his watch, 28 people, mostly teachers, were killed in a bus attack in November last year. 11 days later, 36 quarry workers were slaughtered in an overnight rampage. But the national government has rallied solidly behind him. The performance of the county commissioner, to me, is above reproach. He's doing a, a wonderful job. Olen Koyo has his own version of what's going on in Mandera. When there is an issue regarding two, two communities, like recently, uh, one Gare man was killed, a teacher, a government teacher. When, when the locals are crying that we need, we need teachers from down country, he was knifed as he exited a kiosk where he had gone to buy goods. Why did that man have to die? Ethnic hatred. Is it Olengoyo who sent the killer to go and, and uh, stab him with a knife? Uh, stab him with a knife? As we talk with residents in Mandera town, the subject of clan differences has come up several times. When we met Mama Fatuma, she could not hide her frustration. Like most parents, She's worried about the failure by non-local teachers to return to school owing to insecurity. But what keeps her up most nights is the trend of the attacks. Mingi 
ni mambo ya ukabila hii ile wa Somali wengine wanapata amani lakini what you down na wagari anasema wako na wasiwasi sana usiku na mchana walali wako na wanafikiria sana what should make a local resident believe that only non locals and members of one clan are the main targets of the al shabab The political scene in Mandera has for years been deeply rooted in clan dynamics. Although all clans are from the Somali tribe, the Gare, the Ajuran, the Borana, Sakuye and Burji all speak an Oromia dialect, meaning they trace their roots primarily to Ethiopia. The Degodia, Murule, Ogaden and Marehan on the other hand speak a Somali dialect. They place their roots primarily in Somalia. All these clans had settled in present-day Kenya before the colonialists drew the border. In the early 70s, smaller clans now grouped under an alliance called Kona clan migrated into Kenya owing to the political instability in Somalia. <laughs> Clanism here is so pivotal that elders representing each of these clans decide which political leader would be fronted in the general election. In Mandera County, the largest clan, the Gare, and the second largest, the Degodia, have for years been at loggerheads over resources and political ambition. Governor Ali Roba, Senator Bill Okero, the women's representative, four MPs in the area and almost half of the county assembly come from the Gare clan. The Murule got the deputy governor's seat and positions in the county executive. The Degodia and Umbrella Kona clans are sparsely represented in the county government. After the election, tensions erupted, leading the two biggest clans, the Gare and Degodia, to go at each other. The fighting spilled over to Wajir County. Grenade attacks were also linked to clan violence. Some leaders claimed the Al Shabab were also involved in the conflict. By 2014, at least 100 people had died in the inter-clan fighting. As many people as those who were killed in Westgate and the quarry attack combined. It's no longer about pasture and water. This is completely politics. That the clashes are politically instigated. And county government must adhere to the constitutional requirement in sharing of resources. Once that is done, I think this conflict will will somehow subside. By the close of 2014, however, the county and national governments were able to contain the warring clans. But the perception that a few clans were in control of county resources remained. The cosmopolitan Mandera town appears peaceful from a bird's eye view. On ground, any clan tensions are well hidden. The same clans that exist in Mandera also live in neighboring Somalia. Similar clan dynamics exist and have been known to dictate even the decisions within the Al Shabab. This shared perception of inter-clan differences has enabled the Al Shabab to infiltrate this society. We don't have confidence in each other. We really do don't have confidence in each other because we now those days there are days that these guys are hitting the county institutions. Like let me give you an example of Kenya Power Lighting Mandera. This is a power which is serving the whole county, the whole district. And somebody was there to destroy this. And people were saying they were between 15 to 30, between 20 to 30. All these armed people who were coming in live about 30, even one to two people who are carrying arms, their movement somebody should you must be in that tension of them. What about they are from border? all the way to the middle of the town what were all those residents all those houses after when what will come alala the problem you know the governor ali robo has to address the lying grievances 
of the clans in Mandera. Before the county came to power, there is a conflict among the you know, warring clans. Still, it, ha it has to initiate a gradual level of reconstruction process so that it has to unite the community at county level. Again, it's the common cause, common enemy of Al-Shabaab. If he failed to do so, then Al-Shabaab, they are going to capitalize on that so that they are going to side with those Kalanis who are against the, 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 the governor himself so that they can make mayhem. In December 2014, all political representatives from Mandera sat in a baraza with elders, women and youth from all clans. This bitter reality of the link between clanism and terrorism was for the first time laid bare on the table. Because we are among them. Everybody looking at the other side, left, right. Who is sitting next to you? Kila muta, wakati anafanya hivo. Nani anakana wewe, wakati muta anafanya. Hivyo anajua kwa. Kwa nsi abura hawa. Baka abura heje. Nani hiko anaka? Marihan. Habana sema hiko anashabab marihan. Habana bethisi alulungu yanko. Habana sema marihan na mburule anashabab. Marihan na mburule anaka. Lakini, wakati anashabab nigia iji. Habana kuja, habana kuja hedege ya hikota. Anakuja para para, kitu sisi na sumbua, kutuma watu ya low country. Ay, why? Because again, you may find Malisa yote, al-shabab, washa, Somali yote, mbidibudu yote, Malisa yote, ay, very clear. We are the ones who are harboring all these activities. Abana tafuta maalingine, ukitaka tafuta al-shabab, ukitaka tafuta nini, we are harboring them in Mandera Tau. Alex Olenkoyo believes the governor has failed to address the inequalities that exist and that this unending cycle of struggle for county resources and political power has made him a moving target. Some of those things like the explosion on the, on the governor's security vehicle that was at the tail, that was about the time when the governor had given when the county government had awarded contracts for the tarmacking of the roads in this town. Quite honestly, you know, I sleep very well when it comes to uh, my moral obligation in managing the resources of the county. As much as the county commissioner paints a picture of political and clan interests interfering with the war against terror, one thing does not add up. If it's true that there's a deliberate attempt by the national government to improve security in Mandera, why then can Al-Shabaab move freely in and out of Mandera? Naturally, our next stop is the border. The Kenyan government has admitted that one of the largest contributing factors to the increasing terror threat in Kenya is the porous border, especially here in Mandera. At this border point, for instance, only a handful of officers during the day will man this area. They'll check contraband coming in from Somalia into Kenya. But to my right, stretching hundreds of kilometers into Elwak town, the border is open. No one is manning it. But perhaps the most distressing bit of it is that during the night, it's too risky for a few officers to come out here to man the border. So, when darkness falls, this area is pretty much a playground for anyone on either side to go in and out. The day patrols only leave more questions in our minds. The police checks are surprising. We stand to observe as this man drives his donkey cart from Somalia into Kenya. He's got a load full of charcoal. The search begins. A few 
few glimpses later and the charcoal trader is free to proceed, his donkeys slowly rolling into Kenyan territory. It's not hard to imagine what else could be so easily hidden and ferried into the country in broad daylight. As we stroll along the border point and back into town, in Nairobi, big plans are underway. From border point one, we want now to close the border. Uh, that will reduce the porous border, the entries into our country. And so we, we will be starting the construction of the border uh, next week. But back in Mandera, the wall construction plan is not received too well. Police officers on the ground know that a wall will not do much to deter terrorists from crossing over. More than anything, a wall won't seal off secrets that lie within this border town. Many officers are eager to share information about their work in Mandera, but few are willing to go public with the details. Four police officers have agreed to speak with us on condition that we conceal their identities. So, Oscar, your border, we are about uh, 20. Na border ni mrefu. So, tunajipanga, Oscar, we are about 20. So, we are mzigo na pita, we are chilia. Iko tuto le ashuli, we are vile wana pita pia. Muna wa search, sometimes wana pita mbele ni kabla mjafika, wana ina wana soma shuli. By lunch time, wana rudi, wana check, wana pita. Then, tena wana rudi tena, until six. Six, ikifika, sisi, tuna withdraw. So boda, in our check you open. So usiku, kuna watu wana pita, kuna mzigo wana pita. So kwanzi hapo wezi jua nini mepitishwa. Lakini most of the time kuna mzigo wana pita. Wana pita usiku sababu wakuna askari pale ndani. Siku sababu, sisi tukisha with it raw. Tunawilo tunajitarisha, tunaingia kwa kips. Hizi handaki. Kwa sababu ya security yetu ya sisi wenyewe. Because in Mandela wezi patrol of your view kwanza mkiwa kwa boda. Iko polisi wano kwa police station. Wao kazi yao ni patrol within town. Lakini sisi wa boda, sisi ni boda. We don't have a vehicle to patrol. So we use foot patrol. Foot patrol. Over the years, police deployment into Mandera has been done on punitive basis. Once stationed in Mandera County, a police officer will have to brave the harsh terrain, the unforgiving weather, and poor pay. Mshara ni kidogo na hadishi pile pesa tunapewa ni ukiwa umeoa unapewa 1200, ukiwa hujaoa ni 600. Na hii pesa mpaka uifuatilie with the documents. Upeleke documents kama ni major certificate nini uonyeshane. So if you calculate it, you see 20 shillings per day. So you have for 20 shillings per day. And you are switching, you want to take water for liters. And a liter is at 60. You want to survive in one meal. So it is very difficult. Even food, uh, we don't have fresh food. We always take uh, one meal per day. Because we don't have time to cook, we don't have money to buy the food. So it's, we tend to lose uh, one meal a day so that you may survive. Without basic survival amenities like food and water, those patrolling the border spend their days dehydrated and demotivated. And when opportunity presents itself, these officers admit it's hard to say no. We won't patrol the whole border. Not just to protect our border society, but to get what I eat tomorrow. What I need. If I get maybe somebody who is coming, who can give me an officer. I have some rules I want to take them to Malaya. You can take him here, it's your, your water. So the officer will take it. Ningumu sana askari kutokuwati ile hongo anapewa kwa hana. Na msumali kwa hida yake anamini. Ukimshika na makosa, kuna kitu wanaita masilag. Hiyo kwa honi kitu kikubwa sana. Anaweza kukufanya anything. Anakuwachia kila anakuwachia. 
na wewe unachukua kwa sababu unajua maisha yako ama unajua hii pesa itanisaidia ukaondoka sasa una negotiate uona una unaachana na yeye anapita lakini unachukua kile kitu kidogo kile kitu kidogo sasa in the process unapata amepitisha amepitisha ile vitu na si kupenda kwako na tunachungu sana na tunalilia serikali kama inataka tu tuwe stable enough na tunaweza kuangalia mambo na corruption na tukilipwa vizuri mimi siezi nikilipwa vizuri mimi siezi hata punde ikipita mimi naweza simamisha hiyo punda na nirudishe maana yake mimi nitafikiria nitakuwa na second thought na kama kuna kitu inaitwa consciousness ukiwa ume, u, kuna kitu umechukua na umechukua kwa pande nyingine mwili wako utakuwa unakwambia umefanya kitu mbaya but ukifikiria ile kitu kiwei kosha zinaweza kukwambia nimepitisha lakini pande ile nyingine si kuwa na kitu sasa unakuwa unajipa morali sasa sina si kuwa na kitu nimepata kitu lakini at the end amepitisha vitu mbaya vitu mbaya asha i think there are institutions in this country which have been given the responsibility to deal with issues of corruption and ethics among public officers we have the ethics and anti corruption commission ask them do they have an officer in mandera to deal with issues of corruption two corruption is an animal corruption is two way it is not the security officers who are corrupt who corrupts them and that is a fundamental question kenyans don't ask themselves it may be easy for the officials to dismiss the border corruption but it's created a clear gateway for terrorists. 